going on everybody? I'm Nora from PhoneDog.com and this is a uh, this is the Nokia N900 Nokia Nokia not Nokia Nokia I'm gonna get that right one of these days anyway it's the Nokia N900 it's uh, it's a phone but really it's like a tablet computer with a phone kind of thrown on top it's their first MIMO 5 OS device uh, it's available direct unlocked in the US and in Europe. Uh, retails for around $650, $700, although I've already seen it drop to under $500 on sale. Uh, so if you're interested in this device, you know, definitely do some comparison shopping online. You should be able to get it for a little less than you can on the Nokia site directly. Uh, basically, I've had the good fortune of, of checking this device out for a while now. I did an unboxing. It was a few weeks ago now, but uh, getting to the full review. And the thing about this device is that Nokia made no, uh, no bones about the fact that this is a, a device they made for geeks. It's not meant to be a mainstream phone. It's, it's a geek enthusiast device. And that's what it is. And it leaves me scratching my head a little bit because I think with a couple of very basic, you know, uh, refinements like, like a button on the front of the phone. There's no button at all, no hardware button at all on the front of the device. Uh, or easier access to the phone itself. Uh, you know, to get to the dialing features or get to, you know, where you make a call. They could have actually made this more of kind of a hybrid thing for, you know, not just the super hardcore geeks or the people who might be really interested in it, but then get frustrated by the fact that it's hard to use just as a phone. But they could have had a little bit more of a universal appeal, which seems like it would make marketing sense to get people to start, you know, getting excited about this phone, getting excited about the future of Nokia and uh, adopting the, the MIMO platform. But instead, you know, it's kind of, the, Nokia has this way of doing it, of being very pure about things and saying, this is a device for geeks, and so we'll make it only for geeks. And, you know, that's left me, the more I've used this phone, the more frustrated I've been with it. Uh, there's a lot going for it. The MIMO 5 OS is very cool, uh, a lot of potential, a lot of power, but it lacks just little usability things, like, you know, some of the screens don't have icons, and so, you're kind of left wondering, well, how do I get around the screens? And there's a very tight logic. It, it's, you know, you can learn it and it works and there are rules, but just why not make it a little bit more user-friendly is, is where I'm left after using this for a little while. So we'll take a quick tour around the phone and uh, maybe we'll do some more in-depth videos covering MIMO 5 kind of more in-depth. Too much to show in one video now. But, uh, you know, overall, I would say if you're interested in MIMO, it's a very powerful phone, very powerful device, great web browser. Great multitasking, lots of onboard storage, great camera, but as an everyday smartphone, you know, the usability kind of left me cold, and uh, there are other devices out there that I think I personally would wind up going for. But enough of that, let's get to the phone. Nokia, Nokia, I got an old dog, got to learn new tricks, Nokia N900, let's check it out. All right, so here's the device, the N900, and uh, size-wise, you know, it's, I, I, I feared that it would feel kind of a little bit more like a little brick than it actually does. It's actually not too bad, you know. It's uh, more along the lines of a phone like the HTC Touch Pro 2 series or uh, other Nokia's like, well here's the N97 and the N97 Mini uh, for comparison's sake. I think we need to zoom out a little bit there. That's in, that's out. So you can see it kind of size-wise, you know, sort of, sort of, uh, kind of in between in some ways. It's thicker than either the 97 or the 97 Mini but uh, it's a little bit smaller, well, it's a little bit wider too, but it's a little bit shorter than the N97. It's larger than the Mini in all respects, but then the N97, you know, it's kind of a little bit kind of, you know, shorter and squatter, um, or narrower, shorter and wider. There we go, shorter and wider than the N97. Anyway, you know, kind of comparably sized uh, to your other sort of high-end smartphones. There's the BlackBerry Storm 2, and because you have an actual keyboard here, you know, it's kind of similar footprint, a little bit smaller footprint than the Storm 2, but thicker, because uh, you get that slide out keyboard. Anyway, so, you know, it's definitely a heavy but pocketable phone, um, business class sort of size, and you get the slide out keyboard, and the slide out keyboard is actually pretty good. I, I still, a little befuddled why Nike puts their, their space bars uh, over to the right. Uh, I think they would just do better having them in the center, I understand there you know, reasons, ergonomic type reasons, whatever. Uh, the keyboard's pretty easy to type on, even though it is kind of small. I like the feel of the keys, a little that grippy plastic, uh, dome shape, pretty good uh, uh, tactile feel and response. 
Um, you've got your five megapixel camera on the back. The camera has been really quite good to use. Um, you know, Nokia makes good cameras in general. And uh, so here's the camera interface and you can choose, you know, your modes, macro, landscape, all that stuff, video mode. I uh, go back, you can go to your settings, all sorts of settings. We'll go to resolution, and you can go high resolution or widescreen, five megapixel high resolution. Uh, your flash settings, it's got the dual LED flash, which actually performs pretty well. And then you can go to your image gallery, check things out. Uh, I'm gonna go back, so, I didn't mean to do that actually, but here's what happened is I'm in multitasking mode because I just got a new notification. And so you've got with the MIMO 5 OS, you've got your different windows you can you can go between that are that are open applications. So my camera is now in standby. So I can go to that. Or I can tap. And now I've got, I just closed the camera app, and so I've got this one, this new message, which I'm not going to open up on screen. I don't want to show anybody's uh, information and I don't want you to know where the wired party that I got invited to is but uh, basically this is how it works this gets into one of my things with the MIMO OS it's very powerful uh, and it's not that hard to really you know learn how to use it but we're in an age where you know usability on a device the, these smartphones become more and more consumer friendly mainstream friendly and again you know Nokia said this is a geek phone but they could have just done a few little things to make it a bit more mainstream friendly to try to up the adoption rate, like adding some labels or icons on the screen. You have the one icon up in the corner, and that takes you back to your, your uh, application menu. But then on this menu, you've got a more button for more, but there's no obvious way to get back. Now, if you know once you learn how to use the phone, you know that you tap in the corner and that helps you get back, and I can X out that application, and now I'm back to my home screen. But for the novice user, for somebody who's just picking it up, you know, who wants to check it out for the first time, let alone for somebody who's used to using something like, uh, you know, I, pick your poison, I'm not going to name any names, but there are other smartphones on the market now that have made a point of being more, you know, kind of mainstream user friendly without sacrificing power. Uh, so, you know, that's my thing. I, I would have liked to see Nokia kind of refine the MIMO OS a little bit more before launching it on a commercial device. That being said, once you get used to it, it does follow a pretty logical structure. It works quite well. Uh, I'm going to load up some music here. So we'll go to the music player. 32 gigs of internal storage, uh, which is tremendous. The phone's powered by an ARM Cortex-A8 processor. You can see on the back there, you know, I've got 32 gigs of storage and my Cortex-A8. Uh, so for multitasking, multimedia stuff, you know, it's, it really works quite well. So we'll get... Uh, this music going on. This was just came preloaded on the phone. And then we'll go back. We'll go back to the main menu and we'll load up the calendar. And so I've got the device syncing up with my Google Calendar. So you can see my events are uh, online here. So I go to the 22nd. Uh, there's an event I had going on. We'll go back. Go to the 18th there. And then I can go back to multitasking mode. And you can see I have these multiple cards going on, or, you know, windows, and it's easy to swap back and forth between my applications using that button up in the corner. So, you know, like I said, once you get used to it, you know, like, oh, that little icon takes me to the, you know, open application window. And that little icon takes me back to the application menu. So I guess maybe I'm nitpicking, but uh, I don't know. Labels, words, you know, icons that other devices use and people are used to can make things easier. Anyway, um, go to the more menu there and you can see, you know, tons of apps pre-installed. There's a terminal app. It's a Linux based device. It's a uh, MIMO 5 is open, open source. And so Linux geeks, you know, will love this that uh, you've got a terminal app that comes pre-installed on the phone. How cool is that uh, if you're into fiddling around and, you know, you need to do power, power stuff, you need to, you know, terminal into other devices, whatever it is. And that goes beyond my, uh, you know, my expertise. I'm not a sysadmin. Um, but you've got all kinds of applications pre-installed, docs to go there's a Facebook app, you've got your weather apps, uh, AP News, Amazon, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, a cool app that I installed from 
the MIMO downloadable catalog of apps is uh, Hermes, which lets me integrate with my social networks. So similar to what uh, Android 2.0 and, and um, Palm Synergy do out of the box, um, I can use Hermes to pull down my social networking information and put it into my contact info on the device from Twitter and Facebook and um, Right now, it's just Twitter and Facebook, but so I've got, uh, you know, those two things set up with my accounts, and so I'll go back, and I'll refresh, and so it's refreshing my information, and there I've got another um, email notification, so I'm going to close out of, you can close out of things directly here from, you don't have to go into the app, you can just close out the cards right there, so I'll do that. Now, if I go back to my contacts info, so we'll go to uh, Aaron Baker. So you don't need to see all his contact info, but that actually is his Facebook picture that's being pulled down. And we'll kind of block out some of that info, but you can see in the bottom there where it says web page, twitter.com slash phone dog Aaron, that's being pulled down from his Twitter information. I didn't enter that manually. So that's, that's the Hermes app doing its thing, which is pretty cool. And I'll just show you kind of briefly just to show, you know, some of the power and flexibility lurking kind of behind the main screens here. If I go to the, the little, there's a contextual menu, you know, for most applications and screens up there on the top. Uh, you can see with the little, uh, the arrow, the drop down menu. So if I tap that, I've got all, this, all these options for my contacts. So I can add contacts, I can get contacts from places, I can look at my information, I can sort according to groups, I can, I can export, I can go to availability, and so now I'm sorting by availability. And by uh, recent contacts, and I've got all my recent uh, interactions you know, with different, different of my contacts. And you can see, you know, that some of them were, uh, you know, in conversation mode, I am mode, or, um, you know, phone calls. This is a voicemail. That was a, an SMS message. Uh, and you can sort that way, and then I can tap onto a contact and get that contact's information. And now I'm going to send Aaron a new SMS message. And there it shows my, uh, I said booger basher. That's embarrassing. Um, no, it's not. Uh, so you can see, you know, my, my conversation history with Aaron, and this goes back a few weeks. And so I'm going to send a little message that says filming N900 review. Send. And so now it's on its way out, and now it's sent. So we'll go back, and we'll see what happens if he replies to me. Uh, but in the meantime, let's set up the web browser. This is one of the more impressive um, built-in features on the phone and probably warrants its own video series.